high drama uh, for the church because there was an example of a, of a brother who uh, went to a uh, people who by all accounts have never heard the gospel preached. And um, we know clearly, you should know, if you're a believer in Jesus, if you read the Bible, um, you know that we have a command to take the gospel to every nation, and that's not negotiable. Um, matter of fact, this is one of the prophecies to come to pass before Jesus returns to the earth, which is that the whole world would hear the gospel. doesn't mean everyone accepts it. doesn't mean everyone is repentant and converts. Uh, that's not what it's saying, but um, that you would have the chance to hear it. And that was, you know, like Paul, the apostle would say, how faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How would they hear without a preacher? So anyway, so there's this brother who went to this remote island off the um, coast of India and he was murdered. Um, frankly, because he didn't look like them. I'm not sure that his, the Christianity part of it had anything to do with it, but he was on a mission to, to present the gospel to these folks. And so they murdered him. Um, this is part of the deal that we should know. This is not weird. It's not different. It's not strange. It's not unexpected. Um, Jesus laid it out very, very clearly. This is what will happen to some. Not to all, but some. And we don't get to choose who is who. God does. <laughs> okay, right? Sometimes sometimes we make things way, way too complicated. And like it's way, way more complicated than, we're, than we try to imagine it. Especially uh, we Westerners. We Westerners and we Americans are pretty awful um, about our idolatry in ourself. We're obsessed with ourself, uh, with our well-being, with our situation, with our blessing, with our, etc. Our country, especially Americans, we're very self-centered, completely self-centered. Um, and I am one, okay? I'm not better than you guys. I'm just saying. Um, it's a fact. And so now that doesn't mean that times we're, we're also one of the most generous uh, people as a nation and charitable. And that's directly because of our Christianity. Um, but same time, we're not really ever focused on anything else. So even with, in terms of Christian missionaries, right? Missions, folks who go to lands that uh, need the gospel preached. That's good. We have sending organizations. We have, mega, mega, mega bucks um, and big organizations dedicated to sending Americans, for example, uh, although this brother was not an American. Um, but, <laughs> well, I forget the statistic. We, I have friends who have this at the ready. Um, it's either 90% or right around 90% of missionaries sent don't go to where it's needed. <laughs> they go to the tropical islands or, you know, uh, places where it's been penetrated pretty good, okay? We're going to Europe is really not a place the gospel is needed right now. It, they might be failing. They might be a whole generation coming up without, but that's their choice. They have churches all around. Like, it's there. Um. Not in even today, still, but even in in the years past, going to China, this was okay. That you get it. There was there's been a, hundreds of years, or maybe forever, without the gospel. So you we have to go there, um, believers. And it's only because there are no believers there that we're sending folks from other places. This is just like Book of Acts kind of stuff. So, anyways, um, not trying to minimize America or Western people or whatever, but. Um, the, the, the whole missionary idea and evangelism generally is so poo-pooed. I mean, you even bring it up. And I, trust me, I'm talking from 
my Manti house experience, okay, friends and family, whenever this would even the edges of the subject come up, just the insinuation that me as a, wait a minute, you're going to be a full-time uh, minister now? You're in ministry, yeah. Yep, uh, secular work is gone. God took it. So this is my this is what I do now. Oh, do you think you know you help people in in various places like the Middle East? And yes, we Wings of the Eagle and uh, End Time Church and things. We're we're actually sending money and support to Middle Eastern countries that don't have a lot of Christians. Um, well, do you think you know you might be traveling there, like, and then the slant, you know, you get the suspecting gaze back. Do you, would you actually go? You know, that's crazy. That's crazy. You ain't crazy is the, is my message here. Um, if God, first of all, and I'm not saying everyone is called to go on an international mission trip. That's not what this episode is even about, but if God calls you to it, then do it. Duh. Okay. This is like my word of the day. Duh. Yeah. If he calls you to do it, then do it. It's not crazy. I mean, the word, look, like I say all the time now, the worst case scenario is you go to heaven. So what? Um, anyway, so this is, this has come around now with this missionary went to this Island and he got murdered, martyred. Okay. He got martyred for the name of Jesus. Um, and you know, some folks are like, oh, should he have done that? Was this a, you know, was this appropriate? Did he do the right training? And I'm just like, oh man, the <laughs> training. Thank God, Timothy and uh, Silas, etc., uh, didn't have to go to training school or 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 missionary prep or linguistics uh, education before they went out. Now, now, again, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to poo-poo this, that whole idea. That those are fine things. They're good things. Great. Let's have that. But to say, you know, it's some type of biblical requirement. It's the opposite of that. God will take care of his own. We have to believe that. Where's your faith? Where's our faith? Goodness gracious. Yeah, if we're putting our faith in men, regardless of how good and godly and called they are, it's not enough. Man will let you down. That's it. So at the at the base level, we've got to be trusting God. Okay, anyways. Yes, Pastor Randy is a very excellent point. We don't understand the whole concept, I don't think, of being faithful to death. That's the the root of the issue. Cut to the root. We don't get it. We don't want to get it because we're afraid. We don't want to die. We don't want to be hurt. Well, no, I don't think anyone signs up to get hurt or, or to get injured or to have be tortured. No one, I don't know of anyone who would want such a thing. I certainly don't. But there's bigger issues, bigger fish to fry, okay? And that's how I want to ease into this today here on Wings of the Eagle Radio. By the way, uh, you can send me an email if you'd like, if you need some kind of feedback or want to shoot me a suggestion, question, or comment, radio at wingsoftheeagle.com, uh, or just say so that you're here right now, either on Facebook or on the app, the speaker app, or the Wings of the Eagle app, whatever if you're listening on the website, whatever the case, just shoot me a hello and, uh, or a question, and I'll do my best to get right to it. All right? Um, so here's the thing. The call to evangelize, um, and again, just being, this is just being Bible teacher mode right here. It, the, the call to evangelize is not conditional. It's not if you have X, Y, and Z first, then you do it. It's not if you're comfortable with it, then you do it. It's not any of those things. It's just what you do. It's part of who we are. How could we not? 
and I'm not saying I'm there. I'm not there. I'm not. I'm not nearly as whatever. But um, there's got to be something. You, there's got to be something. Sometimes God will bring folks to you. Great, awesome, wonderful. Um, but even when they do, what are we? What is the topic? Right? How do we? Do we really think we have this power over death? The, the God of the universe created us, who actually loves us and is our Father, and has sent the Son to die in our place. Do we, is this important enough to say, oh, by the way, he's coming back again, and he's not going to be happy? It's a hostile takeover of planet Earth. So why, why wouldn't we, oh, by the way, and if kiss the Son lest he be angry, I don't want any of that. Nobody, nobody really does, but they have to be told, right? Um, you know, we're at a, such a point in society where if Jesus is whitewashed and 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 um, made into a wuss and and uh, something far less than God, and we just don't even bother fighting it anymore, or not fighting it, correcting it. Uh, uh, Michael, Michael, hey, Michael. Um, question uh wings of the eagle by the way can you send me an email if you'd like some kind of feedback or shoot me um i just found the website in case hello yeah yeah definitely michael um yeah was that or was that me talking into the mic that was weird <laughs> okay uh all right here here's one uh what you what you're saying is that uh is true most christians aren't even focused on what the lord would have them to do from day to day, never mind going doing these great things you're talking about. And I think that's the problem. Maybe. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the call to, and I don't think most missionaries think they're doing a great thing. I don't think. I think they're just saying I'm being obedient. And um, this is what God told me to do. So, and they're like, this is what he's telling me to do right now. So that's what I'm doing. This is, I, you know, I sent a little picture of a little radio studio because this is your calling. He says, walk in the calling with which you were called. He, he created some gifts in you that are uniquely suited for you to do. So do that. <laughs> All right. And then there's some things that are generic, right, that apply to every believer. Some are specific to you. Not everyone is wants to be on the radio, enjoys radio, enjoys doing videos or doing things like this. I totally get that. Um, that's my th that's one of my good things. That's fine. It's not yours. Great, but we all have to uh, witness witness the gospel. That's that's actually talking about it with folks who don't believe it. Okay. And now this is different than like a pastoral thing where you are already dealing with a believer who needs counseling or, or needs some kind of correction or doctrinal whatever. That's, that's in the house. That's in-house. I'm talking about outside the house. Talk to atheists. Talk to Muslims. Talk to agnostics. Um, that's what, honestly, when I grew up, my wife and I, all of our friends, dang near every one was not a believer and like was proud of that. I don't know, you know, I only know some examples still today and it's gotten to the point where most of them won't even speak to us anymore because of the Lord, because of Jesus and what, because of the fact that I'll say, I'll be out front about certain things and they don't like that. So they cast us aside. And that's, again, that hurts, it stinks, I don't like it, but it's the word of the Lord. I mean, that's, it's going to happen. It happens all the time. It's going to continue to happen. So we have to be okay with it. Who do we serve? We serve our friends, um, even our family who might kick us out. No, I don't think so. Here's something. Again, sorry for you radio folks, just the video guys will see this right now. Here's the uh, latest edition of the Voice of the Martyrs magazine. It's free, by the way. You can sign up and uh, get it delivered to you. This is Turkey. This is the uh, streets of, I believe it's Istanbul. 
good uh, for all people, good news of great joy. So this is obviously the Christmas season now, heading into December. And yes, even here, where the population is allegedly 99% Muslim. In fact, they are the center of the coming Islamic kingdom. And um, even there, yes, they deserve the gospel. They deserve the good news. They deserve to hear and be saved, have the offer of salvation extended to them. If they don't know, how would... That's what Paul is saying. If they don't even know about it, how the heck are they going to be saved? How are, they gonna, are they just going to realize it one day? That, oh yeah, Jesus, who I never heard of, is the Son of God, which is a concept I know nothing about. I just know it. Well, of course not. This kind of goes along with the whole, you know, that's right, Margie. Everyone does deserve the gospel. That's there. Then it's up to them. It's up to the Lord to water that seed, right? And it's up to them to receive it. And how do how to receive it? With a glad heart, with a hard heart, right? That's not on you anymore. And it doesn't mean you should be uncaring or don't follow up. Okay, I'm just saying that's not you can't. You don't have the power to do that. You don't, you can't make anyone believe. But you do have the power in the Holy Spirit to preach the good news. So that's that's evangelism 101. That's about this missionary thing. That's about that's why I don't I don't have any tolerance for any kind of naysayer about this brother John, I think his name was uh Chow is the last name, um, who went to this island in India and, and was martyred for it. I don't I, I can't wait to meet the guy. You know, I mean, there's nothing negative that I have in that story at all. I hope you don't. If you do, I think ex examination of the heart is, is required. Um, okay. So, finally, we're getting to the Islamic Kingdom. What is that about? So, here, you know, again, Turkey um, is a prime example that they have... You know, since uh, in the past several hundred years, they've gone from the seven church, 2,000 years ago, they, they had the seven of the main churches in all of Christianity. We know that because the book of Revelation, Jesus talks to those places, and they're all in Turkey. And so it's gone from that completely flipped around to almost no Christians, and any who are get thrown in jail like Andrew Brunson, and you have stuff made up about them. There's some wild and crazy conspiracy theories about, of course, that everyone who's opposed to uh, Islam is now a Zionist conspirator and um, um, and uh, part of a, a cult and, and all this weird, wacky stuff. Um, that doesn't, that shouldn't stop us. Still need to, to, to go. All right, so the Bible tells us there's this, there's this thing coming before the Lord returns, and you prophecy nerds will know what I'm talking about. There's a kingdom coming, a final kingdom, kingdom that hates Israel and that will kill Christians. It will surround the nation of Israel. At first it will look like it's friendly and make a commitment of peace. Then it will break that commitment and invade the Antichrist himself will lead that invasion and will sit in a newly built, rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. So that's coming. But the fact is that that kingdom is not a Roman kingdom like we've been taught so for so many years now, for about 100, it's only about 150 years old. Well, that's not true. The rapture thing is about that old. The Roman Antichrist theory is, is much older. But I'm just talking about what the text says. I don't care about opinions. I don't care about history, uh, uh, opinions in history. I don't care about church history in this. But there are many throughout the centuries who did identify after the rise of Muhammad and his new religion, his cult called Islam, um, that that 
would produce this kingdom that the Bible describes. And that now that we've gone in the course of time, and we've seen that these kingdoms are coming and going, but there's one that rose up and lasted longer than all the others and crushed all the others and took over all their lands and d destroyed all their previous religions and destroyed all their previous culture and laws and have new versions of all those things. That is called Islam. And that that kingdom ruled in those lands for hundreds and hundreds of years. And then all of a sudden, some big catastrophe in the world happened called World War I, and that ended. But now it's coming back. That's a, this should not be surprising, okay? The point is, don't, please, if you are on this train about looking for a European Roman kingdom to come, or an antichrist, or a false prophet. I don't care if you're talking about the Roman Catholic Church. I don't care if you're talking about Italy. I don't care if you're talking about the European Union. All of that is wrong. The Bible doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. So don't waste your time. As I say, you're barking up the wrong tree. We're barking up the wrong tree if we're looking there. It ain't going to happen. They're totally divided. Brexit? This is the biggest, you know... Uh, the anyways, no, it's, it's not happening, and the Bible doesn't say it's going to. Don't look there, don't look there. I feel like every time this comes up, I'm going going back to the same point because as a as a teacher, you want to emphasize the keys. Give them the student the keys to understanding. The key that unlocks this is the identification of why in the world. Would the, this beast kingdom, and that's what it is, it's a kingdom, in Revelation chapter 13, for example, why in the world would it say lion, bear, and leopard? Are those just scary animals that God just wanted to throw in there because they're scary? Or, like everything else in the book of Revelation, is it a reference to an older scripture? It's a reference to an older scripture, Daniel chapter 7. So he put Daniel chapter 7, zip, right to the end times. And in the book of Daniel, and we, I've had a whole series on this, I've got a whole teaching in, in uh, End Times for Beginners, I've got every chapter of pertinent to this is broken out. So go get that, endtimesforbeginners.com. Um, but Daniel is the revelation of this. He is, he explains what the lion, leopard, and bear are. They're locations. They're nations. They're kingdoms. So this final kingdom unites all of them. That's all it's saying. That's it. And by the way, the lion, bear, and leopard, none of those kingdoms are in Europe. None of them. Okay? None of them are in Russia. Okay? None of them are in China. None of them are in... South Africa, okay, Australia, the islands of the Pacific, none of them. And certainly they're not in America, in the North or South America, okay? So have I narrowed it down? Because this is the Bible talks about certain lands. So the last kingdom is part of those lands. No big deal, no big deal. So the coming kingdom is in those lands. And if the short answer is, I'm not going to get into it. We can, uh, I guess, a different time again. Uh, the lion, bear, and leopard are the kingdoms of Persia, Iraq, uh, ba Babylon, and Yavon. And those are the Bible names. And the nations today that, that we know them by are Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. Those are the nations that have to combine to find the final kingdom. So, is there anything that those nations have in common? Uh, Islam is what they have in common. Um, and the fact that there's a new push recently, since, you know, past five years or so, especially, um, for this kingdom called the Caliphate. They call it a Khalifa. They call it the Caliphate. This is the one system of government for all Muslims. It's, this is prescribed from the very beginning 
of, his, of Islam and Muhammad and his writings and his life and his deeds and the Quran. And all these things are agreed that there is no Islam without the caliphate. That all believers have to come under one nation. It's called the Ummah. Right? One nation under God, under Allah. So what the those land pieces have in common is Islam. Now, right now they're fighting with each other. But eventually they won't. And that's when we have to watch out. So, and by watch out, I mean watch prophetically. Okay, now you're a watchman on the wall. You're seeing these things happen. What are you going to do about it? Oh, hey, Susanna. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Uh, and Mary Beth. Hey, Mary Beth. Great to see you, sister. Uh, and she says, Turkey buying property in East Jerusalem. Yeah, and they're, um, that's, yeah, they're certainly campaigning there. They're putting their flags up all over. The, and when I say they, sometimes it's Turkish agents. Sometimes it's just Palestinian Muslims because they see that flag and they know that that was the last caliphate and that's the one that's coming back. The Bible says the same thing if you look at it. There was a great kingdom and that fall, fall had fallen and it's going to die, but then it's going to be re resurrected. That's what we're seeing now. We're seeing that. We're seeing that. Um, this is not sensationalism. This is not looking at newspapers and making the story up as we go. This is calling it out before it happens. There are authors and teachers um, that have been talking about Turkey prophetically for 20 years. This is going to be the place where the Antichrist will either come from or have his base of operations, and that was incredibly not popular 20 years ago. You were laughed at. But they're just saying, this is what Scripture says, so at some point it's going to happen. It is happening now. And just like we're talking about, what is this, uh, talking about the bear and the lion and all that, go to Daniel 7, and Daniel 7 is very detailed about the order of these things, about what comes when. And there's a fact that the, the caliphate, it looks like it's coming in stages, this kingdom. It starts in Iraq, then it goes to Iran, and then Yavan, or Turkey, gets involved. So that's exactly what we're seeing. ISIS created the caliphate in, in Iraq and Syria, now Iran is rising on the world stage. Soon they're going to come in and try to take it for themselves, and then the Turks will counterattack. Is it that hard to imagine now? No. And then once all those wars, wars and rumors of wars, once those, and that's what Jesus was talking about, those lands, um, when those are over, that's when they coalesce. Okay, That's when they come together. That's when they unite. That's when you see the beast rising from the sea with seven heads, ten horns, and all those kingdoms are combined. That's the coming kingdom. Now, again, it's an Islamic kingdom because that's where it is. I don't care what theory or teacher or website you want to look at or you're depending on. Whoever, If there's anyone who ever says Islam is going to disappear is a liar. Islam will be here until the Lord Jesus himself destroys it. It's a belief. And first, the, the, the idea that there's even going to be some kind of um, attack on Israel before the Antichrist invades is not true. I don't see that anywhere. So there's, there's not going to be a big defeat for the Islamic armies. just isn't. Anyways, um, there's, a, there's many um, um, resources that you can go to for this other than wingsoftheeagle.com, which I highly recommend, and the End Times for Beginners course, which I highly, highly recommend. Tons of stuff in there. Um, but... The place, uh, again, you can find online. There are lots of books, resources. There's a free one even. If you ever heard of Armageddon News, 
um, on YouTube or Facebook. That's a brother named John in South Africa, the nation of South Africa. And um, he has, he got this revelation years and years and years ago. And so again, it's not, it's like, Oh, we got a revelation. He's just some new spiritual understanding. No, it's just scripture. And you're getting it right. Lining up, you know, line by line, precept upon precept. Um, and there's a free book that he put together. You can get on PDF called The Islamic Antichrist, similar to Joel Richardson's book, by the way. But he wrote this first, John, believe it or not. Um, so you can go get it uh, right on Armageddon News uh, Facebook. Uh, there's a link right to it at the top. Um, it's 206 pages. But it's right in PDF, so you can put it right on your computer or tablet or phone. Um, totally free. And one of the hallmarks that has to do with this whole evangelism part of the equation is will you evangelize the Islamic kingdom? Someone has to. Um, and how it will lead. Yeah, we know how it will go. We should know. We're not, should be under no pretenses. So like this brother in uh, this Indian island who went, and hopefully every missionary knows and has it settled. If they don't, they shouldn't be in there. That they might be killed. That they might be martyred. Uh, they don't understand that going in, they should, because you might. You might not, but you might. So you have to have that settled uh, in your mind and in your spirit beforehand. And everyone, you know, it's very popular um, feeling or impression in the church, in the even the prophetic, you know, the ones with understanding, the the believers who are teaching these things and even trying their best to, you know, see where we're at and are not under, you know, have all the, the good heart is behind it and all that. Um, it, the temptation is to say, oh, the great apostasy is here now. Or the, even the birth pains are here now. But that's not really right. Um, the, for example, the great apostasy, we read many, many, many places. What was some of my devotionals this week? Um, was it an Acts or Thessalonians? Forget. Um, about apostasy. Yeah, it had to be First Thessalonians. Apostasy coming from tribulation. It's just. It's just what happens. This is how it comes about. Jesus said the same thing in the parable of the sower or the soils. Excuse me. Right. Different falls on the different soils. It falls on good soil, bad soil, rocky soil, right? But one of them is as soon as tribulation comes, they fall away. That's exactly what he said. Fall away means apostasy, the great falling away. So when tribulation comes, there will be falling away. When the great tribulation comes, there will be a great falling away. One to one. When, when the Bible says the great things, right? It's different than every other one. It's worse or to a more extreme level than every other time. Yes, there's tribulation today. Yes, people are being killed for the faith today. But not like then. It'll be worse. More. It'll be everywhere. It'll be widespread. It'll be extreme. Um, so that's when you have great tribulation, you'll have great apostasy. And you can't get there from here. You can't get there without it. If you can tell me for sure, which you can, that the Great Tribulation has not started yet, that's true. We know that's true. It's a fact. It's never happened before. We know that's true. 70 AD, that's a lie. Okay? Hasn't happened. When it does, that, and only then, when it starts, is the Great Apostasy. Can't happen before that. Can't happen. Paul said that as well. You think the day of the Lord is coming? You think Jesus can come back? He's saying, no way, Jose. Hold on a second. Uh, we know this by the word of the Lord, that that day cannot come, cannot, until what? The man of sin is revealed, the Antichrist, 
who sits in the temple of God, and the great falling away happens. Consistent, consistent message. So during this time, the great apostasy is brought on basically by terrorism, right? If people are afraid to die, we're talking about afraid to go to the field and the missions field and um, um, evangelize anyone, even in our own country, if we're afraid to do that because someone might not like you or hurt your feelings uh, or or persecute you somehow, maybe throw you out of your house or fire you from your job, you, we're afraid to even do that because of those consequences. We're not, that is, you are not ready. We are not, how can you run with horses? You are not ready to die for Christ if you're not willing to be fired. I'm sorry. We are not willing to die for Christ if we're not willing to get our feelings hurt or to offend someone else's feelings. Again, in love, we're presenting the gospel, okay? We're not doing it to win an argument. We want them to be saved and live forever. Um, hopefully we do. Anyway, we're not there yet. But this great tribulation hour is going to force the issue. With Israel, yet again, one-to-one, -one, the Israel and the church, there is no scripture anywhere that says you can only do one at a time. <laughs> okay? This is it. They're both going to happen together. The pressure is going to be maximized on both entities, on the nation of Israel and the church. And there'll be some overlap, right? Are, aren't there Jews in, Jews in Israel who believe in Messiah? Yes, there are. So, that's overlap. All those things will be pressed. That's tribulation, pressing down pressure to choose. Will you stay with Jesus or will you leave him? We know that he can't leave us. That's not, the, that's not what he's saying. Apostasy means you leave him. And he doesn't want those around who don't want to be around. I can think of it was last week. I was giving you football analogies all day, right? About players who don't want to be there. The coach is a good coach will say, Well, I don't want him there. He doesn't want to be here. I'm I'm giving him what he wants. He's gone. That's how hell's gonna work. That's how apostasy works. Yes, you can lose your salvation if you don't want it anymore. If you leave it. So, the again, part of this, uh, John uh, Preacher here who wrote the this uh, e-book on PDF, he has a whole chapter on the great apostasy, conversion by terror, he calls it. Jesus said this. Many time, many, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate one another. The end. <laughs> who will? Who, how can you turn away from the faith if you're an unbeliever? You mean you're a believer. You're turning away on purpose. You, you're choosing to hate those who won't, who won't go along, who won't just, 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 just come on, just. You want us to live, don't you? You want your children to be alive, don't you? You want your medicine, don't you? You want your heat, don't you? Ah, oh, man. The, the Spirit says explicitly that in the later times, latter times, end times, some will fall away from the faith because they paid attention to deceitful spirits and the doctrines of demons. It says the end times. It doesn't say throughout church history. What's a deceitful spirit and the doctrine of a demon? It's called Islam. It's literally a doctrine of a demon. A demon came to the man Muhammad in a cave and said, choked him, by the way, and said, write this. And hence we have the Quran and every bad thing that flew, flows from it. It's literally a demon's doctrine and a deceitful spirit. 
but and again this is this this principle is consistent but it, throughout church history but it's not a spiritual expression when Jesus says he who finds his life shall lose it or seeks to keep his life shall lose it but he who loses life for my sake shall find it that's not a spiritual expression that's not something to a way of life a lifestyle choice or whatever cool packaging you want to throw on it that's not what it means it means what it says jesus is not trying to fool you he's not trying to confuse you he's not trying to confuse us he's just giving you the straight stuff believe him at his word if you want to preserve your fleshly life and stay alive instead of giving it up for him you will go to hell. I don't want you. You're not a Christian, really. You're you're choosing. You're choosing at that point. Yes, you were saved, but guess what? If you're going to, okay, all right, Joe Christian, you now have a choice. There's a Islamic terrorist uh, knocking at your door in the shopping mall at the, wherever. And it doesn't have to be from his law. It could be from anywhere. But the point is, you have the choice now, and he has a gun. Or he has a sword. Uh, if, you, if you convert to Islam right now, he will leave you alone. He'll leave your family alone. He'll never come back. You'll be fine. Nothing will change. Or you say, I will not be converting to Islam today. Uh, Jesus is the Lord. And you should know him. Repent of your sin and come to him. He wants to save you. That's what we should be saying. But guess what? It's not going to end very well. Probably. It's probably not going to end well. But that's okay. Because Jesus says, whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. You're going to live forever. You're going to be resurrected. So why, what's the problem? Really? Yeah, of course, it's easy to say that now in my chair, talking on the radio to a bunch of friends. But it's still going to be true if and when this ever happens to us. Oh. <sighs> The great apostasy. Isn't this, I mean, look, Satan really, we know God doesn't change, right? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Uh, but Satan's really, his plan hasn't really changed either. He does the same stuff over and over, and that's going to be what it's like. Matthew 4, again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, and he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you fall down and worship me. That's what Islam says. This is the same thing as Islamic beasts offers the people of the earth. If you fall down and worship me, you'll be allowed to live in the Islamic kingdom. Problem is, it'll cost you your soul. So... Don't do it. <laughs> right? At Luke 9, it's even more specific. What 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 whoever sees, seeks to save his life will lose it. That means go to hell. Whoever loses life for my sake will save it. What profit will a person have if he gains the whole world but destroys himself or is lost or loses your soul? It's another way of putting it. I mean, you can save all you want. You can be, have a happy life and be spared and have warmth and a good, nice house and a nice job and uh, die and go to hell. In fact, you caught you sent yourself there because you're 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 chose wrong. He says, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. That's the second coming. Okay, I think we sh we're sure about that.
it's an offer that's coming from the Islamic kingdom, not the European kingdom, not the Roman kingdom, not the Roman false prophet or anything. The Pope is not involved in this. Um, this will be made by the Islamic Antichrist. Because if, you if you're leading the kingdom of Islamic nations, you're a Muslim. That's the end. Uh, it, you have to be. You have to be. So that's going to be the offer. If you worship and submit, you'll live and gain the whole world. Because Islam will be out conquering. I don't think they'll actually get to, to the whole world, but um, they'll. there's definitely a good, you know, a nice portion of it, a third of it perhaps, that will. So when the Son of Man comes from heaven in his glory, those who were ashamed of him and his words denied him before men because of this persecution from Islam. Jesus will deny knowing them and cast them in a lake of fire. So by gaining your life here and submitting to the beast, you will actually lose it for all eternity. That's it. Now, the subtlety has begun. Um, haven't you heard it said we worship, we all worship the same God? We all worship the same God? We just call him by different names? Well, we, we, there's no part in that. That's not, that's not how it goes. Anyway, I highly recommend you pick this uh, work up. There's a great, a uh, lot of pictures and charts. Um, you know, some, some of it's speculation more than biblical teaching, but that's all right. You know, people are allowed to have opinions. And uh, that's cool. Some of it's definitely, definitely worthwhile. I love this brother. I love what he's doing. And um, yeah, all right. Well, I don't need to tell you any more about how Islam is not true. I hope, or how it can't be reconciled. Uh, but and see, this is this is like some say, well, yeah, but the 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 Pope or whatever, um, he's 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 cozying up to the Muslims, and this is the one world religion. The Bible doesn't say there'll be a one world religion. It says there'll be one religion that will be enforced on the world. That's different. Um, the Pope is not going to be the false prophet. If the kingdom is an Islamic kingdom, the false prophet will be an Islamic false prophet. Common sense. So the Pope is a Catholic um, Catholics, for whatever you think of them, are not Muslims. <laughs> they are not Muslims. Ask any Muslim on earth who knows anything about their book. You ask them, can a Catholic be a Muslim? They'll say, uh, no. <laughs> uh, no. They, they acknowledge the Trinity, which Islam forbids. The end. It's not Tawheed, that's that's paganism. That's that's um, um, what do you call it? worship more than one god? Why am I polytheism? Yeah, polytheists. In fact, the Quran says that many times. Against the polytheists, do this. That's us. That's to them. We are the polytheists because we believe in the Trinity. You, sh I hope you do. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the God of the Bible. That's the God of Israel. Always has been. Always will be. Um, so because of that, that's that's damnable doctrine to this this jealous, uh, this petty demon, Satan called Allah here. Uh, he cares very much that you don't worship Jesus, that you just worship him. That's the same as Matthew 4 and Luke 4, right? Just worship me. So, all right. Um, I'm going to go check on some comments here if there are. They are, Randy, Pastor Randy says, they are already building in the U.S. I'm sorry, building what? Can you, can you specify that a little more, please? If you're still listening. 
Um, and uh, Susanna says, uh, when Shia and Sunni become one, big trouble will follow. Well, that I agree with. I think everyone could agree with that. Um, and that actually might be the result, likely could be the result, uh, of when this Daniel 8 war plays out, which is the Shiites of Iran versus the Sunnis of everywhere else. Um, and when Iran is defeated, which is what the Bible says will happen, they will be completely defeated, not by Israel, okay, not by America, but by the Turks and the coalition that they lead, I believe. So you're going to have Turkey, probably Saudi Arabia, almost definitely Saudi Arabia, uh, and Egypt coming together probably to uh, overthrow the Iranian government, and they will. So is, at that point, does that mean all Shiite beliefs go away? Or are they just kind of, you know, absorbed into this and they're going to need some kind of Mahdi to arrive, you know, some caliph. I think we're going to have the caliph come from that uh, environment, come from that morass of uh, aftermath of this great war. And, uh, and then the words of Jesus will be extra poignant when he says there'll be more than one false Christ. So the... Uh, They'll be coming. You'll get a few candidates. Some will die. Some will go. And then the, the real one, please stand up. And that's how it goes. Okay. Um, Fred says, major contributor to the great falling away will be twofold false beliefs. The rapture is not taking place prior to or by the time of the great tribulation. That's definitely possible. And Israel is once again defeated and dispersed, refuting the final return. That's a bigger one to me, because the rapture thing is a very Western idea. Most of the church in, a, in the world does not believe it. So, you know, yes, here in America and the Western and the, sells the books and, and, and makes the money is the pre-trib rapture idea. And you have seminaries here who, who teach it like crazy, and many pastors here believe it. But if you're talking about globally, it's not really that big of an issue. So I don't, you know, for us it might be a problem, and it, it, it will be. Um, but I think much, much more than that is the threat of death. It, because the tribulation in general is what causes you to question your faith. Um, and then, of course, the Israel being defeated and dis and you know driven to the nations again. When you see that again, that's the that's the invasion at the end. That's the last three and a half years. Uh, Israel loses, and that will be a big defeat to a lot of folks right now who think that's never going to happen. And that's definitely that's going to cause them to question. And that's that's a good part of the world, you know, is is very much on that. But I don't know. It's I'd love to see numbers on that. I love to see data points on um, how many in the church globally believe in a pre-trib rapture or that Israel right now is the final return of Israel. I don't. Most are are is a replacement theologians, but they don't believe Israel, the country, has to do with anything. So I don't think they're really. Anyways, that's just conjecture on my part. Ah. Uh, Right, Fred, right. In order to fall away, you'd have to be in a place to fall away from. That's correct. What lies will you believe, Susanna says? That's right. We know we know and understand the word because of that. That's correct. Lack of knowledge, right? Uh, Mary Beth, Gaza conflict is, is Yahweh versus Allah, visible on the ground. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's certainly one of them. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to see this is a competition of gods, right? This is a this is a holy war, R truly, and it, it it always has been. But there's this there's this obsession among Muslims. And by the way, we just saw. Um, oh, Randy, Randy clarified. Or right, hang on a second. Uh, we just saw some crazy. Uh, I'll withhold my opinion. This Mark Lamont Hill guy who used to be on CNN all the time. Thank God he's fired now um, because uh, he, he made some absolutely ludicrous. He went to the UN and in public was saying that the from the river to the sea 
should be all Palestine. And he was trying to spin that after like, oh, I didn't really mean kill the Jews or, or chase them out. It's, it's Hitler. I mean, it's Hitler talk, um, but it's Islamic Hitler talk. And so this is, this is deeply, deeply ingrained in Islamic teaching. Um, if you're if you run into Muslims who don't hate Israel, who and the word hate, of course, is going you can spin that a lot of ways. But if you think Israel is an apartheid state, if you think they have no right to be there, if you think it's a it's a Palestinian land and there was once a country called Palestine and the Jews took it over and are now ruling and occupying it, that's hate because it's wrong. It's wrong, and you're, you're hating a, a race of people because of who they are, not because of anything else. You hate the Jews because they're Jews, and you want them to die or leave. That's Islamic core teaching. So if you run, and again, that's why it's satanic. Uh, one of the reasons, it's antichristic, right? Antichrist, you want to behead the believers, by the way. Je the Revelation says be beheading would be the mode of martyrdom in the last days. There is no other candidate other than Islam for that. None. Who does that? Nobody does that anymore. But it's again, it's part of it's it's doctrinal. It's built in. It's baked into the cake. You can't get away from it. Anyway, if you ever run into Muslims who who support Israel, it is so minor. It's a tiny, tiny percent. And frankly, they're not being good Muslims. And thank God they're not. Thank God. But again, I mean, I, I can tell you, I can tell you from me, experience on the ground, life, living life. How long have I been going on here without even taking a break? This is ridiculous. Almost an hour now. Oh, yeah. No audio on Spreaker. Oh, that stinks. Oh, great. I'm going to have to fix that. Um, yeah. Wow, that's the worst. <sighs> anyway, my apologies. So, um, anyway, it's core doctrine. So, I have, I have actual neighbors, like, on my street, who are Muslims, um, and just picking up, you know, not being adversarial or crazy or arguing or anything ever like that. We love them. We love their, their kids are here all the time and ours at their house. Um, you can pick up. There's, there's Israel hatred at the Palestinians are these poor, oppressed people by the satanic Jews. And they're not allowed to look at a Bible. And never go to, you know, inviting to churches huge no-no so like right i mean just saying it's just a thing it's just true these are what we have to evangelize around through in bottom line is since we're doing this for an hour already um the evangelism of the end times is going to be in the islamic kingdom itself are you ready for that It's always in Israel. We always have to go to the cities of Israel. We we'll go where the gospel isn't also. And that's right now is the Muslim world. Because the vast majority, I've said this several times on the show, the vast majority of Muslims on earth have never, not only never heard the gospel faithfully presented, they haven't heard it at all. They've never even met a Christian person. They've never met a Christian person of any maturity level, of any denomination, of any stripe. Jesus has not been modeled. His gospel has not gone out. Anyway, and so you have the vacuum, no Jesus, you have Satan. That's the way it goes, right? Easy. Um, 
So anyway, there are principalities and powers over these places. There's a reason why the book of Daniel specifies there's a principality over Persia and there's a principality of Yavon, okay? These are the two of the highest ranking, I believe, fallen angels uh, in Satan's army, and they're responsible for these two locations. So they are, they might not even like each other because there's always conflict going on, but eventually they combine, and that's when we have to pay attention. All right, and our evangelism has nothing to do. We have authority over the those powers. That's why the armor of God is with us. It's not affecting us. We have we have the Lord Himself. It's the we have our faith to shield us. We have the Word of God in our hand to use. You have to know it to use it. All right, that's it. Whew. I am done. Uh, this is not about. Um, this is not about Islam or any th hatefulness or, or being angry. It's not about that. It's about evangelizing and the fact that the coming kingdom is not a Roman European kingdom, uh, not a New Age kingdom. It's not a one world order kingdom. Uh, it's not anything. It's certainly not a Zionist Jew kingdom. Um, it's an Islamic kingdom. And we know from many, many proofs that that is the, that is the case. So accept that. Let's accept it. And then what? And then what? How do I deal with that? How do I live as a Christian in the light of that fact? Um, we continue to evangelize and hopefully pray into, and hopefully you can help in that effort here with Wings of the Eagle. We want to, and I'm not sure if we'll be able to, um, offer an, a course on Islam. And no, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. We're not going to invent the thing. We're going to use one that's already having fantastic results called from the Wadi, W-A-D-I, uh, ministry. Joshua Lingle uh, and friends have really created a fantastic resource. So I want to partner with them somehow to get people enrolled in that so they can we can do this work. And complete the Great Commission and Jesus comes. Okay, that's what that's what this is all about. I love you all. I thank you. Oh, Randy clarified. He says they're already building in the U.S., building power, he means. Um, Islamic activity going on um, in the Congress. Yeah, the U.S. Congress. Yeah, we've got several representatives now. They overturned that ban on headwear in the, in the, in the House, right, because of the new Islamic woman who refuses to bow to uh, the God of Israel, I guess. Uh, so the God of Allah commands her to put that on, so she wants it on. So we change the rules. So this is not a good sign, okay? We're not going to be fighting off the Islamic kingdom here in America. We're going to be infighting. All right, that's it, guys. I love you all so much. I'm sorry if this audio was not working on the radio portion. If so, you can't even hear this. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Uh, this has been Wings of the Eagle Radio. If this is ministered to you at all, please help us to continue to stay on the air uh, because in February a, a new um, uh, bill will come due for, to be able to keep us to do this. So if you need your help in that, go to wingsoftheeagle.com slash donate, please, and help if you can. Um, and you can find all these episodes, everyone we've ever done on this platform at least, uh, wingsoftheeagle.com slash radio. Just click on the word radio. You see all the episodes there. So binge on the radio with us and uh, we'll see you next time go in peace in the name of jesus <laughs>